guy's got it coming, he does. You know it, definitely. Big slob. Get me a beer, boy, he says. My father lets me use his hotel suite. I throw a party, he comes uninvited, steals my girl right out of my arms, and then get me a beer, boy. Just like that. Well, this will fix him, but good. In a few minutes, he'll be a walking zombie, talking gibberish and making silly noises, stuff like that. You sure? For sure, I'm sure. Of course, some wacky things can happen. Look, maybe we better not. Oh, come on, Harold. You're not going to chicken out on me now. Look, I've watched Dr. Anderson administer this stuff a dozen times. I've even acted as guinea pig for him myself. First, he'll start yawning, and then he'll go ape for a while, like I said. When it wears off, he won't know what hit him. It couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Right. And, just to make sure... One spiked beer, coming up. Hey, Duke, here's your drink. Later. Duke, I, I thought you wanted a cold beer. Later, boy. Can't you see I'm busy dancing with our girl? Later. Hey, that's not meant for you. I mean, I'm a terrible opportunist. <laughs> That wasn't meant for you. There. <laughs> I saw you heist the beer. I saw you. I saw you. Delicious. Wouldn't save your buddy a swallow now, uh, would you? Just keep your eye on the kitchen door, and when our gracious host comes through with a tray, grab. Oh, thanks. <laughs> You're a champ. <laughs> Can't seem to stop yawning. Thanks a heap. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, you can't get off that easily, Dreamboat. We'll dance those yawns away. Come on. Why don't you try your sleepwalking in the bedroom? Sorry. You all right, Todd? Yeah. Would you excuse me for a minute? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Need character references? What's this all about anyway? We're just curious, that's all. Well, he's a very nice guy. He's a dreamboat. And a gentleman. Yeah, yeah, sure, but is he a stable individual? What do you mean, is he stable? <laughs> a party full of cokes and he asked me, is my date stable? Well, is he? Stable? Well, he and Buzzer Hyman for a construction company. Every day they work 22 stories up. 
that stable enough for you? Come on now, level with me. What gives? It, it was just a gag. Ray and I... Were... Harold. Harold, come here. Look. He's one of those phlegmatic cats. Out cold already. I was scared, really scared. Listen, are you two going to tell me what this is all about? Do you know what this girl is talking about, Harold? Haven't got the slightest. <laughs> Just a gag, Dr. Anderson. Just a gag. Of all the idiotic, dangerous pranks. Give me the police. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Why do you need the police for? Please try to understand. In some individuals, as little as one millionth of an ounce of these experimental chemotherapy compounds can induce a full-blown psychosis. Hello. This is Dr. Bernard Anderson. I want to report that a Mr. Uh, Todd Stiles. You stupid. Todd, please. Just a minute. Stupid, stupid. Mr. Todd Stiles is in an induced psychotic state. He's at large somewhere in the city and is potentially dangerous to others and to himself. Okay, is that Todd Stiles, S-T-I-L-E-S? Where are you calling from, Dr. Anderson? Uh, the Marriott Motor Hotel, City Line Monument. Give me a full description of the suspect, doctor. Height, weight, color, and age, identify marks, and all particulars, please. They need a description. This is about 6'1". 6'1". 185 pounds. 185 pounds. Light brownish hair. Light brownish green hair. Green eyes and loaded with freckles. Green eyes, uh, lots of freckles. Okay, doctor. Attention all cars. Be on alert for the following described white male American. Todd style. Six foot one inch, 185 pounds. Light brown hair, green eyes, heavily freckled. In middle 20s. May have seen running from City Line and Monument. This man is in a psychotic state and reported to be dangerous. City Line and Monument, Ed. 22. 22. Proceed to Marriott Hotel at City Line and Monument. Meet a Dr. Bernard Anderson. You can tell me? When I got out to the fountain, uh, I don't know, he, he just appeared. He could have gone in a million different directions. He, I don't know, he was just gone. Uh -huh. Doctor, what about this experimental stuff? How does it work? Uh, what can we expect from him? Anything, everything. The whole range of human emotions. Well, there must be some kind of pattern, some basic pattern. Yes, there is a basic pattern. Even in microscopic doses, these compounds can induce hallucinations, psychotic state, both temporary but 
Roughly comparable to those of schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. I see. Well, I don't. I mean, what's going on here? These, these two idiots here give my buddy a glass of drugs, makes him go out of his mind, and you stand here, and you talk, and you well, talk, Well, what do you suggest talk. we do, Mark? Stop Mer talking and get out and look! How? I don't know, just get out and look! Where? Where? That's for you to know! Well, that's what I'm trying to find out, where and how! I'm sorry, go ahead, will you? All right, Doctor, go ahead. Phase one has already taken place. Yawning, intense drowsiness, sleep, a minute, an hour, depending. Then, uh, Explosions, Bill. It's in this case, but not as a rule. Possibly you had just angered him, uh, a grievance, uh, an imagined grievance of some kind. It's possible. It's very possible. What did I do? Look, you and you and you, shut up, all three. Just shut up! Murdoch! Styles should now be in the swiftly transitory phase two. Patients describe this as a state of confusion, a feeling of helplessness, a sleepwalking, a nightmare, lost in a great mysterious cobwebbed world. But, Doctor, you said transitory. Yes. Well, transitory to what? Trouble. Following this state, the uh, really dangerous phases begin. First, the patient becomes euphoric, high, a giant, ten feet tall, unpredictable uncontrollably happy, at one with the world. How long does that, that high stage last? Good question. The total effect of the compound will last from six to eight hours, depending on the individual and upon the amount administered. Six to eight hours? You've got to find them before then. But well, we hope to. In any event, I'd better be with you to administer the antidote. This will cut short the effect and greatly ease any after effects. Well, it's a big town, Doctor. What happens if we don't find him? After the high period, what then? What goes up must come down. Depression? First paranoia. Intense. Terrible. Unreasoning terror. Then depression. In my own experience, I found that... You say in your own experience? All of us working in the field have undergone at least 20 and as many as 40 sessions with the compound. And in the final phase of depression, all of us, even the most stable, have turned potentially suicidal. What are you trying to do? Get yourself killed?
here. Greta? Water. Water? You want water? Pray for rain. The world's full of wise guys! Guys that push and shove on the dance floor. You're right, pal. You're, you're absolutely right. Water. Sure, pal. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Ice cold and fresh from the spring. More, please. Sure, pal. Sure. All you want. Some place within this 20 square blocks. He's got to be. Now, this is where he was last seen, approximately 15 minutes ago. Here we are. Check the cabs in this area. No pickups reported. Check the bus schedules. This time of night, the buses run only once an hour. Now, we know he's on foot. Now, the way I figure it out, we divide the area up into 10 cities. You the guy to put the call in? You from the papers? No, I'm just a friend of his. Oh. I told the police everything. Well, I know, but... Well, what do you want from me? I told the police everything. I know, but, well... What was your right? Was he in pain? What did he look like? <laughs> what did he look like? <laughs> he looked like a kook. That's what he looked like. Did you say anything? I don't know. I was too scared to listen good. Well, why? What did he do? What did he do? You see here? That's where my Adam's apple used to be. I tell you, that guy's a psycho. A killer. Murdoch! Believe me, with that guy loose, there ain't nobody safe in his bed tonight. I'd know you anywhere. The name is Joe. The world's full of Joes, and I love them all. Shake, friend Joe. So what were you trying to do when you're coming? Bust the door up? The earth turns. I just offered you the bright side of friendship. There's also the dark side. Choose! do for you, Fred. <laughs> I've been wandering a vast, arid desert between heaven and hell, and I've got a gigantic thirst. What do you suggest, friend Joe? In this trap, beer. Beer? <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> that's marvelous. <laughs> I'll have a beer. <laughs> With a martini chaser. What's the matter, friend Joe? 
yourself. I give you a toast. A toast to friendship. Here's to friends both near and far. Here's to woman, man's guiding star. Here's to friends I've yet to meet. Here's to those here, all here I greet. Here's to childhood, youth, old age. Here's to prophet, bard, and sage. Here's a health to everyone, peace on earth and heaven's one. Prozit! Skull! Lakheim! Zerovia! Vivat! Salute! Salud! A votre sante. Delicious. <laughs> Again. Again? Again. Only this time make it a Manhattan chaser. A Manhattan chaser? Two cherries! <laughs> friend Joe, you're staring again. Sorry, friend. What can I play for you, Shakespeare? Lover. <laughs> you know it. God love the cheerful giver. to music and the night shall be filled with music and the cares that infest the day shall fold their tents like the Arabs and silently steal away Longfellow to have run out of toast. What are we toast to, friend Joe? Closing time. <laughs> Here's a... Something for the poor, sir. Hey. Something for the poor. Come on, oh, come hey. on, a helping hand. You don't need hey, to hey, 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 I told get... you, Maggie. I told Take you for the, the last time. I don't want you coming in here. Time I want to... Stop it! A toast to you, Lady Charity. He who bestows his goods upon the poor shall gain as much and ten times more.
Turn her loose. Lady Charity? This old con artist is Tambourine Maggie. She's been hustling this neighborhood for years. Turn her loose, friend Joe. All right. <laughs> All right. But she's a no good phony. God bless you, sir. God bless you. <laughs> Is it for a mission in India? An orphanage in Tibet? Medicine for darkest Africa? You ain't putting me on, Jack. No. Tell me. Please tell me. Well, it's, it's like you said. Yeah, like you said. Medicine for darkest Africa. That's it. Medicine for darkest Africa. God and now abideth faith, hope, and charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. Tonight we give for people less blessed and less fortunate than ourselves. Tonight we give for medicine. Hallelujah. Give. Sure, Mike. going to give you one more chance to be charitable. Keep you, sir. God bless you. Wait. We must give friend Joe a chance to contribute. Friend Joe? Taking us all for prize suckers. She's a phony. Here. Here. Take it. Take it all. And I hope the medicine they never get cures everybody in Africa. Here, Lady Charity. Wait. Thank you. From all of us to you, Lady Charity. Oh, oh God bless you. God bless you. No. God bless you, Lady Charity. Charity. God bless you all. Well, I know there ain't nobody in the joint left with a red cent. So, the house is by. Hey, 
too much. Just too much. From the song of the same name. I thought I'd seen it all, had it all until tonight. Can't explain. Bring life into this crummy joint and love. You knock me out. You really do. I'm a chestnut in second. What? I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Who? All right, give it to me once again. Where is it? 13th and Chancellor. Yeah, okay, I got it. What was that all about? Tambourine Maggie, an old witch who works at Charity Hustle, just walked into a station downtown with that tambourine loaded with greenbacks and said she wanted to give all the money to charity. So what? Medicine for the dear dying people in darkest Africa. I don't get it. Well, she said that that money was given to her by a saint. A freckle-faced, green-eyed saint. Johnny's place. I don't care what you say. That kid ain't no psycho. He had more brains, more chutzpah, more moxie than any guy who ever bellied up to this plank. And that's saying something, mister. Now look. It's past closing. Now try to get this through that thick skull of yours, will you? He's in danger. And every minute that passes, that danger grows. Now we're concerned for him. We're trying to help him. That man's a doctor and the other's his best friend. And you're a cop. All right, let's try it again. Where is he? I told you, he took off. Where? I told you, with Red. Where does she live? I told you, I don't know. Well, how long has this Red worked for you? Two years. And you don't know where she lives? That's what I said. You're a liar. And you're a cop. All right, let's go. time, Joe. No more question and answer games, just answers. All right, where, Joe? Where, Joe? Murdoch! Murdoch, open this door! Joe, this is your last chance. Where? Murdoch, open the door! 900 Maple, apartment C. Murdoch! Thanks, Joe. For the help. Too much. You really are. What's the matter, Dad? I feel cold. You're kidding. No. It's like the angel of death just flew between me and the life-giving sun. Suddenly I feel cold. You gotta be kidding. You got enough booze in you to start your own atomic war. <laughs> I made a funny dog. You <laughs> An atomic war. I feel like it's already started. It'll pass. I'll snap into something more comfortable and crack us open another little bottle of champagne.
Car 12 calling in. Go ahead, car 12. Front and Flora Street under bridge. Believe have spotted psycho suspect style. We'll keep him under surveillance. Okay, radio assistance on way. Car 22, all police cars, assist officer, please. Come in, please. Psycho running loose with a gun and this stupid thing goes dead. Where's Murdoch? I don't know. Murdoch! Murdoch! Buddy, I love you. I want to die. No, 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 you don't. I want to die. Don't come near me. I'm going to die. No, no, wait, wait. 
Tell me about it. Explain it to me. Why? Why? Consider, Buzz. The two greatest adventures for mortal man. Being born and dying. Now I want to experience the second. I believe the greater of those adventures. Death. Well, come on, you're young. You've got a whole life ahead of you. No. And this night, I, I lived a lifetime. A hundred lifetimes. I saw God. And the devil. Locked in mortal combat. Infinitely vivid. Incredibly detailed. I lived my whole life. Back to the very moment of my birth. For me, only one great adventure remains. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Listen, now please try to understand. You don't know what you're doing. Todd, you remember the party? Try to remember the party, the drink that you heisted the beer, remember? Todd? Todd, for God's sake, listen to me. What are you trying to understand? Those screwball, those kids, they put something in your beer. Some kind of stuff that makes a guy go temporarily insane. Please, buddy, just give yourself a little time, that's all. It'll pass, I promise you. I promise you it'll pass. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Remember you talked about the battle between God and the devil? You want the devil to win? God doesn't want you to die. He wants you to live. He wants you to enjoy the, the good, sweet air and the sky and the sun and the life he gave you. God wants you to live. He wants you to live. more than four hours a night since I left med school. Perfect. How do you feel, Todd? Perfect. Patient dismissed. Come on, I'll walk you out.
This has been a Screen Gems film presentation from Columbia Pictures. Herbert B. Leonard, executive producer. Thank <laughs> you.